All right, problem eight, voter appeal. Part A states that if the null hypothesis is true, there is just one common population proportion. Give an estimate of that common population proportion. Show all of your work. So if the null hypothesis is true, then you can basically just pool these two populations together. You can add up the amount of people in the first population and the amount of people in the second population to get your total population and then you can just add up the number of yeses in both populations. So in this case, given that p1 is equal to p2, we can just write p hat is equal to 78, which is the number of yeses in the first population, plus 94, which is the number of yeses in the second population. Divide that by 200 plus 200, which are the sizes of the two populations. If you do this math, you'll get 172 over 400, which evaluates to 0.43, and that'll be our p hat for this problem. So that's part A. Part B, the researcher remembers that there is a data condition that needs checking before conducting this test. Uh, provide that check, include numerical support. So essentially the condition, um, we want the, we want to know that n times p and n times 1 minus p produce values that are greater than 10. So let me see if we can write all this stuff down. So because there are two populations, we'll have to do this, uh, these, condition, these conditions twice. So for n1, n1 is 200. We'll make n2 200. And in this problem for p, we're going to be using p hat, which is the common population proportion. So remember that p hat is 0.43. So first we'll do n1 times p hat and n1 times 1 minus p hat. So these things are going to be 200 times 0.43, which is obviously greater than 10. Um, this will be 200 times 1 minus 0.43, which is 57. 0.57, and this obviously is also greater than 10. So these conditions check out for the first population in n1. And similarly, we'll do the same thing for the second population, N2. So it'll be 200 times 0.43, obviously greater than 10, and 200 times 0.57, obviously greater than 10. So this condition also checks out for the second population. And generally, you can just skip all this work anyway by just recalling that, uh, by noting that the two populations have... Um, equal values for n. So they're both 200, which means that you just repeat the same work twice. Um, but since we've checked out that all of these values are greater than 10, we can assume that these conditions are satisfied and move on to the next part of the question, which is part C. Part C states that the resulting test statistic value is negative 1.62. Um, provide the corresponding p-value and show all work. So they give you that, they give you uh, this test statistic, t equals negative 1.62, and you need to find the corresponding p-value. So, actually, let's refer to our yellow formula card, and once you find the appropriate table, because you have a two-sided alternative, you need to double the p-value that they give you, that you find. So if you refer to your yellow card on the uh, table A1, table entry for z is to the area to the left of z. Um, if you look for the value negative 1.62, which actually just be a z, 1.62 and using the proper alpha, you'll find that the area to the left of negative 1.62 is 0 0.0526. And because our alternative hypothesis HA is P1 is not equal to P2, this alternative hypothesis implies that we're doing a two-sided test or two-tailed test. And because the p-value that they give you in that table on your formula card is one-sided, you just need to multiply that p-value by two to make it a two-sided test, to make it the area for a two-sided test. So given that our p-value is 0 0.0526, you need to multiply this by 2, so you'll get 0.1052, and that'll be our answer. So that's for part C. Part D 
asks you which of the following is the appropriate statistical decision and conclusion of the 5% level. Uh, check one. So recall that the p-value is 0.1052. They tell you that alpha is 5%, so 0 0.05. And it's very clear that the p-value that you get, 0 0.10, is greater than 0 0.05. So what this means is that you have to re you're going to fail to reject H0. So you can automatically cross, you can just cross out these first two options. Look at the last two. So the conclusion here would that would be that there is not a significant difference in the likelihood of voting for Mr. Lehman for the two populations of male voters and female voters, because we're failing to reject the null hypothesis up here. Um, we would conclude that P1 is equal to P2. So in the context of that problem, that just means that there isn't a significant difference between P1 and P2, and P1 and P2 is the likelihood of voting for Mr. Lehman for both male voter or for either male voters and female voters. So the correct answer for Part D would be uh, this third answer. Okay, that's it.